Hello, boys and girls. We're back again with another exciting faith case today. And as you know, if you've been watching for the last several weeks, we've been talking all about what? The armor of God. All right, and we know that the armor of God, by this time we should know, that the armor of God is the spiritual armor that God's people can put on, that God gives us, according to Ephesians 6, to protect ourselves against our enemy, our spiritual enemy, the devil, right? So, do you remember the five pieces of armor that we've already spoken about? Let's see. The first one we learned, we put around our waist the belt of truth, speaking the truth, knowing the truth. Then we put on, to guard our hearts, the breastplate of righteousness, right? We need to choose to do the right thing. Next, we put on our feet, the shoes of readiness, so we can take a firm stand against the devil. Next, we held up our shield of faith. We need to block the fiery darts of the enemy by trusting and believing, having faith in God. And last time, we had on our heads the helmet of salvation regarding our thoughts. And of course, for all of the armor, we need to have Jesus as our Savior. Right? Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Let's have a look at today's faith case. What's in here? Aha! I think you probably know what this is. This is a sword. A sword. A soldier needs a sword as his weapon, not only to defend himself against the enemy, but also to attack the enemy. Today we're going to be learning about the sword of the spirit, which is the Bible, the word of God. God's Word is not just a book with words in it. It is God's Word, and it is living, and it is powerful. The Bible says it's sharper than a double-edged sword. So we're going to learn today about the sword of the Spirit. And guess where our story is found. Our story is found in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. That's the first book of the New Testament. And this story is also found in Luke chapter 4. All right? So, what's our story about today? Well, you can see right here who our two, two people as part of our story are. We've got here, over here is the devil, okay? And over here is Jesus. And this story is a battle, a spiritual battle between the devil and, <clears throat> and Jesus, all right? Now, before we get into the story, I need to tell you what this is really all about. Anybody ever gone fishing? Or maybe you know something about fishing. What happens when you go fishing? You want to catch fish. You put something on the end of the line that's going to attract the fish. It's going to be some kind of a lure or some kind of bait, right? And you're going to put your line in the water with this lure or bait. And the fish are going to be attracted to it. Take it and then you've caught the fish. Well, that's what the devil does to us, and that's what he's gonna do in this story with Jesus, all right? He puts something out, some temptation, that's what temptation is about, putting something out that we want, and then when we go after it, he reels us in and makes us do something that's wrong, he gets us to sin, and that's what temptation is all about, and that's what's gonna happen in our story today. So Jesus here, Jesus is, is preparing to do the work that God the Father sent him to earth to do. This is where we are in the story. And now he has just been baptized and he wants to prepare himself for all of the work that, that God the Father had sent him here for. And so now, as he's baptized and he's preparing himself spiritually, the Holy Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. And he's fasting to prepare himself, which means he's not eating anything. And Jesus was like this for 40 days. Can you imagine not eating any food for 40 days? Wouldn't your stomach be growling? Right? Well, that's where Jesus was at, at this point. 
And he was probably maybe even lonely because he hadn't seen anybody, anybody for 40 days. That's well over a month. Can you imagine? Well over a month. He hasn't seen anyone, hasn't eaten any food. So he's going to be very, very hungry, right? Well, just at that weak point, that weak point, this is when the devil comes and tries to tempt him to get Jesus to sin. All right? So that's where we are. So now he's weak, he's hungry. The devil comes to him and he goes, Hey, you're the son of God. If you're the son of God, uh, these stones, these stones here, because this would be the only thing that would basically be in the wilderness, right? There's nothing else there. He says, Jesus, take these stones, if you're the son of God, and, 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 and turn them into bread. You're hungry. Come on, this would ease your, ease your hunger pains. Come on. Right? Okay? And so this is like the first wound or attack on Jesus that the devil made. So what do you think Jesus does? Think he gives in to the devil? Jesus takes up his sword of the spirit. Right, Jesus? You have your sword of the spirit, and he's going to use the word of God to attack the devil. And he says... No, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn these stones into bread. No, that wouldn't be a good idea at all. Because, first of all, this is what is written in the word of God. It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So what is he saying here? No, I'm not going to rely on myself. I'm relying on God the Father to provide for me. And this wouldn't be good to use my power that I can, I can use for myself like this. So he says no. He has just used the, the word of God. And this is a big attack on the devil. Now he's got a bigger wound than Jesus, doesn't he? All right? Okay. Now do you think the devil goes away now? Not a chance. He doesn't leave. He comes with something else. He comes and he says to Jesus, well, in fact, he's, he's going to come like this. He's going to take Jesus on uh, to the city of Jerusalem at the temple. He's going to bring him up to the highest place in the temple. And he's going to come again with another temptation. He's going to say, Jesus, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, then Throw yourself down from here, because it is written that he will give his angels charge over you, and they will hold up your hands so your foot doesn't, doesn't strike against a stone. Well, what does that mean? Well, that's a quote from the Psalms that the devil just gave. So here's another hit for Jesus, right? And so what does the devil do here? He is using the word of God to strike and make Jesus sin. You think Jesus falls for this? No, he doesn't. It would be if Jesus just hurled himself off his temple here, it would be like us being in an airplane and saying, I think I'll jump out of the airplane. God will protect me. No, that is trying to test God. And Jesus knows this. And even though the devil is using the word of God against him, he is not using it the right way. So Jesus takes the sword of the spirit, and he attacks the devil. And he says, the word of God that you used, mm -mm. on the other hand, the word of God also says, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord. So this is a big blow to the devil. I mean, this is, this is something else, thinking that he can try and use the word of God against, against Jesus and make him sin. So do you think the devil left at this point? No, he didn't. Now, he comes and he takes Jesus up to a very high mountain. Right? And now, what is he going to do? He's going to give him a nut, tempt him with something else. And he says, when you're up on the mountain, Jesus, you can see all the kingdoms of the world, all the towns in the world and the city, and this can all be yours if you bow down and worship me. My goodness. That is something else, isn't it? And Jesus, he says, mm -mm -mm. 
I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. He says, he says to him, he says, We're, you are to worship the Lord your God and him only, sir. So he's quoting again from Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. He's using the sword of the spirit again against the devil, right? Jesus is not going to fall for that. Now this one was a really big one that really wounds the devil. And he says to the devil, get away, Satan. So Satan, Satan flees, he's gone. So this is a victory for Jesus. Everybody say yay to, for Jesus. Hey, yay, he's the victor here. He didn't give in to sin. And we don't have to either, right? Because the word of God, the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit is powerful. And I wanted to show you some little trick here. Now, we're going to pretend, I hope you can see this, this is water on this plate. And the water is going to represent my life and your life. Okay? Now, Here comes the devil with an attack. Okay, can you see that? And what are we going to do? We're going to take the word of God and we're going to put it... Can you see what happens? Pushes everything back to the side and you're free. The, pow the power of the word of God is what we need to fully not only protect ourselves against the devil's attacks, but to attack him. And that's the sword of the spirit. So we have to think about how does this work in our everyday life? How do we take the word and use it ourselves? So let's think of some situations that you might find yourself in here, okay? So maybe you get yourself in trouble, you've done something, and the devil comes and tempts you to lie about it, okay? And so you lie, you, you're tempted to lie, to cover up so that no one will find out or you won't get in more trouble. Not a good idea, right? Lying is wrong. And you can use the scripture in Exodus on the Ten Commandments, which says, which says you shall not lie, or you can use the one I have in Proverbs chapter 12, 19 that says, Truthful words stand the test of time, but lies are soon exposed. If you lie, sooner or later, you're going to be found out. So that's the word of God. And that means the sword of the spirit knocks that one out. Or what if, what if there's another person, another child, another kid, or maybe some neighbor or somebody who's really mean to you? and says mean things, and it's just nasty, and talks about you behind your back. What are you tempted to do? You're tempted to also be mean to them, and say mean things about them, and hurt them. But we can use the scripture in Luke 6, 27, that says that you are to love your enemies, and do good to those who hate you. That's what the word says. So there again, you use the sword of the spirit to cut that off, and that you can stand. The sword of the spirit is so very important. That's why we memorize scripture, which brings us now to our scripture for today, which says, this is the second part of the scripture that we started last week, which is Ephesians 6, verse 17. We said, take the helmet of salvation last week. This is the rest of it. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6, 17, and B, the second half of the verse. Let's try it again. Ready? And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Ephesians 6, 17, B. Important to know the Word of God and know how to use it. So let's pray and let's ask Jesus, ask the Lord to help us to know our Bible, to get into our Bible, to learn the Bible, that we can stand up and use the sword of the spirit okay let me pray father i thank you for every boy and girl that's listening today 
Father, we know that it's important that we know your word, that we know the Bible, and that we're able to fight against the devil's attacks and temptations, that we would speak your word, that we would hide your word in our heart, that we would not sin against you. And so I pray, oh God, that, Lord, that you would inspire, that you would encourage, that you would help, you would assist every child, Lord, that's listening today to get into their word, to know it, and to memorize it. And, Father, we ask your blessing over each one. We ask that you encourage, that you would strengthen, that you keep and protect. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. All right. And so until next time, we'll see you next time. One last lesson on the armor of God. And so be prepared because I might have something special for you next week. So don't miss next week, okay? All right. Until next time, God bless.